Enough of that, y'all. Hey, it is Kelly. I am here with you for the Fit Pros Show Live. This is the show that I created for you to get you the information, resources, and connection to each other that you are looking for during this pandemic and beyond because the fitness industry needs a little unity, needs a little information. So y'all, I'm really excited to be here with you today. Today is my first alone show, I think, for a while. Um, So I have no guests. We are going to talk about websites. And um, the reason I have no guests is because I am the guest. (laughs) I've been doing websites as my nine to five job now for 20 years, since 1999, 21 years, 21 years. Um, Graduated from college with a degree in studio art. And back then um, there was no such thing as a graphic design degree. And I I did an online portfolio for my paintings and sculptures and decided I really liked doing websites. And that that whole kind of methodology of how to get information out into the world just made sense to me. So I uh, did a cold mailing to everybody in Charleston, in Charleston, South Carolina, that created websites. So back in that day, there were two, two companies in Charleston doing websites, did a cold mailing, got both of them to take me on as an intern and I just figured it out from there. So um, as a lot of you know, I've um, I've been running my own company for the last six years. We create websites for small businesses and that's really why I started the Fit Pro show when COVID started was because I knew I had something to offer you guys in the way of advice and support because I knew I could tell you how to get online and start delivering your classes online and taking payment for them. So that is a little bit, just a little, a little bit about me and my background and why um, I'm the guest for the show today, because I'm going to tell you guys all about, I'm going to tell y'all all about the um, website options that are available and when they are appropriate for different um, parties. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end about the website workshop that I've put together for you guys. So um, jump in. You guys say hello to me, please. Um, I can see that there are a few people here watching live. Say hello. I know most of you guys catch this on the replay. Say hello when you're on the replay as well. But come on in. Say hello. Let me know you're here. Um, and let's get started. I want you guys to make sure that you are jumping in with your questions and with your feedback as I'm giving you this information, because I certainly do not know everything. And I'll just come up front and say that first and foremost, that um, things are changing. I'm trying to find the show in the feed as I'm talking. So let me let me do that. And then I can look back at you guys. Um maybe it's right here. Let's see. Hello. Hello, Robin. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's go. Okay. So it's at the top. Very good. Very good. So y'all things are changing like every single day with websites and fitness instructors. So a lot of companies and a lot of, um, tech companies noticed right away that we were going to need help with our, uh, our situation, right? When COVID happened and we were all out of the gym and nobody could go to their classes anymore. Right away, there were some tech companies that jumped in. I actually got on the phone the first week we were all closed down. I got on the phone with a few different development teams and started hashing out a plan for Um, how can we create a website that would be something where a fitness instructor could just jump in, type in some information, it whips up a website for them, and they're able to deliver their classes online. And at that time, I wasn't in love with the options I was being given. It all had to do with integrating Zoom, which we are all doing now. But at the time, that was still 
really new to people five, six months ago. So I didn't want people to have to integrate Zoom. I wanted it to all work like on the website. And that's why I never pursued having a development team do, this is not working out, y'all. I'm just gonna take it down. Um, that's why I never developed a, one with a team that would work for instructors because I wasn't, I wasn't in love with the options that I had. So um, I've just been monitoring the landscape and watching what people are coming up with. And uh, so today I'm going to come to you. I'm going to tell you kind of what are the essential elements that you need and then what types of websites are out there and what works for what people ask your questions as we're as we're getting in here. By the end of this session, I want you to feel more comfortable with knowing what types of of websites are out there and what will work for you and then what are the essential elements that you need, okay? All right, so first things first, I wanna talk about the different elements that are involved, the different technology pieces that are involved in an instructor or a studio going online and starting to deliver a product online. So the first thing is membership management. So membership management is the software that's going to allow people to come in and register. Hopefully they can fill out their uh, liability waiver within your membership management software. Um, hopefully it's gonna process payment. If you've got a decent one, it's gonna process payment. So then you don't have to have a separate payment processor. But you know, in the really keep it simple sweetheart method that I teach in the boot camp, we do use a separate payment processor and we kind of do the membership management piece manually. So an element of this whole going online and teaching classes is the membership management piece. And that is usually going to involve a software, but not always. Hopefully the payment process is payment processing is integrated. Maybe not. So payment processing is maybe a separate thing, maybe integrated into your membership management. No matter what, you're going to need to either have PayPal or Stripe or Square to process payments. So you're going to need to have some way for people to put in a credit card. And then what happens that information after the credit card is put in? You can have a form that takes credit card information, but it's got to go somewhere and get processed. And then the money has to go to your bank account. So how does that happen? That's either going to be PayPal, Stripe, or Square. Those are your payment processors. There are a few others out there. Some of you guys have been at this for a really long time and you might have authorized.net or things like that, but you've got to have a payment processor. So membership management, that's a that may be a separate software. It may be something you do manually. We will talk about softwares in a minute when we get to that piece and then payment processing. Right. So that is kind of your membership piece that is um, getting payment and knowing who to allow to access your workouts based on whether or not they have paid you. So then the next piece is how do you get the videos out there to people. Um, the two major ways are Zoom and Facebook Live. So you're seeing a lot of people use Zoom and then they're communicating um, and getting the link out and doing different things with it via email or via a Facebook group. But your videos are going to be delivered either through Zoom or Facebook Live. Now, some people are using other things like Vimeo. Some people are using YouTube Live. Um, what else? Vimeo, YouTube Live. I think those those are going to be the definitely the four majors. So the the two biggest are Facebook Live and Zoom. But then you've also got Vimeo, and then you've also got um, what was the other YouTube Live. So those are kind of going to be the four. I took this hair down and now it's weird. I try not to touch my hair during the show, but I'm really bad at it. Okay, so membership management, payment processing, video delivery, right? Yeah, those things have to happen in order to deliver online workouts and get paid for them. Then 
in order to really run this successfully, you're going to want to have a community element to it. So you're going to want to have a way to communicate with your participants. And then um, you may want to have a way for them to be able to communicate back to you and with each other. So that would be something like a Facebook group. Um, that would be something like an email list. Maybe you are communicating strictly through email and you're emailing out. And then if they have requests, they're emailing back to you. I would say that the more successfully you can do this community piece, the better off you're going to be in terms of member retention because you're creating more than just an online workout. You're creating a community. So you want to consider that community piece as you start to think about website options and uh, whether or not you even want to try to take that on. Because, you know, I'm, I'm going to go into a little bit of a rant here. This is a, a little... Uh, a little aside that I go into with my virtual studio business accelerators all the time. The website is not essential to this business. It really, really is not. Um, the essential piece of this business is the money. You have got to be getting paid. If you are not creating a product that you put out to the world and ask for money for, and then money comes back, then you just have a hobby. And if you're not charging enough money for that product, then you just have a job. You don't have a business. So um, the, the website actually comes third or fourth in terms of priorities in building an online workout business. But it's still important. And a lot of us don't feel legitimate or... Um, or like a real business owner until we've got that website. So, um, so that's that's where it comes in. It's it's not it's not the first thing that you have to do, but it may be something that really gets you over a hump. Also, you're not going to be able to really mass really market this business to um, a larger audience and a colder audience if you don't have a website. So the marketing piece is the the fifth piece that I, I've documented as an as the essential kind of elements to an online workout business. It's the marketing piece, and the website is essential to the marketing piece because um, you can have a free Facebook group and a paid Facebook group. That is how I teach you to do it in my keep it keep it as simple as possible method that I teach through the boot camp. Um, you, you can have those things and you can run this business forever. But if you ever want to really scale and you're going to need to pull in colder and colder audiences and you're going to want to have a website for that piece. OK, so questions so far. Does that all make sense? Tell me what you got for me here. All right, so let's move forward. So now I want to talk about the different types of websites that I'm seeing out there as um, as options for us. And what I'm seeing is that there are really two different major types of, I'll call it, let's call it um, online workout website platforms. Okay, we'll call it that. Online workout website platforms. So when we're looking at how instructors are delivering their workouts and getting paid for them, we're seeing a few types of platforms pop up. The first would be a marketplace. And I am going to share my screen and we're going to start looking at some of these options. So let's put this up here. So what you see is my Facebook feed right now. So you can see me. We're in the matrix. So we're going to go. Doo, 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 doo. We're going to see um, that video start moving in a second and it'll be a few seconds behind here. So um, the first one was first type of platform we're seeing is a marketplace. And so these are these websites that we're starting to see pop up. I think this was the first one. Oh, I'm going to show Homeroom Fit first. So 
it's, it's a marketplace. You can go in and you can pick from a lot of different instructors. So it's very, um, a marketplace is something that's going to be very consumer focused. The website is really built around how does the consumer um, consume group, group fitness classes and personal training options. And so a marketplace is focused around giving the consumer the most amount of options that that can be possible. So this is Trisha Murphy Madden and some other um, kind of elite instructors. This is their marketplace that they've put together. And so what you can see is this whole schedule of offerings here. And these are all different instructors. You've got Trisha, you've you've got um, Manuel Velasquez, you've got Doris Thews, you've got Colleen Freeze, you've got um, Abby Apple in here. So, um, and I'm sorry, I, I know I'm missing a ton of people, but look, here are all of those instructors. And if you were not asked to be on that list, don't feel bad. These are the most elite, kind of most um, well-known instructors out there. So, so this is a marketplace of classes from elite instructors. And so what I want you to take away from the discussion on marketplaces is that a marketplace is where all of the classes are being marketed to one customer. I'm the customer, I'm looking at this website and I'm choosing from all of these different instructors. Now that is different than what I teach you, of course, in the boot camp, because what I teach you is to go out and market yourself. You are the brand and to take these um, individual elements of um, the, the biggest pros about being an online instructor and exploit those for your customers. So, so you're going to come out and you know, you're going to say, Hey, um, I'm going to get you from A to B, or I'm going to teach you yoga twice a week or whatever, but you're kind of their person. You're going to, you're marketing yourself as their person. You're not giving them this selection of all these other instructors to be a part of. And the way that these marketplace um, websites monetize is that of course the customer is paying for the classes and then the marketplace is paying the instructor. So the marketplace gets some of the money, the instructor gets some of the money. I'm going to go over here back to the Facebook feed. <laughs> Robin says, yeah, I think I'm probably not ready for a website. I'm overwhelmed with what I have right now. And I completely agree with that. So, um, and I'll just say this to my virtual studio um, accelerator, business accelerator participants, you do not need to create a website right now. It's not a, it's not the biggest priority. The biggest priority is cash flow, definitely. But if you guys choose to do the workshop with me next week, you do get that as part of being an accelerator. And everyone that participates in the website workshop that we're doing next week will have access to those videos forever or, you know, for the foreseeable future. So you don't have to worry if you don't build it with me. If you take the workshop, especially if you pay to take the workshop next week, I want you to take action on the information that you're getting, but you will have access to those videos forever. Okay. So you guys know that when I do these workshops, I do them um, with a, with a, a set beginning and a set end. And I do that on purpose because I want you to take action on what you're learning. And that gives you a real kick in the butt. Like if I don't, if I don't take action today, this information is going to go away. But with the website videos, I know that you're going to need to go back and reference them. So, so we're leaving them up, um, not on Facebook, but in a, a private group in a, I'll explain it later. All right, so another type of marketplace, FitSwap. Let me grab the link to FitSwap and stick it in the, um, here we go. I'm gonna stick it in the comments because um, Steph, who is Steph Silver has been on the show and she owns FitSwap and um, she has given us an affiliate link. So um, if you go there, then I get a little, you know, street cred with 
stuff. And, uh, and so it's, it's good if you use that link. <laughs> okay. So let me show you a little bit about, uh, FitSwap. FitSwap is also a marketplace. They've got a kind of a larger variety. So you can see there are virtual fitness events. Um, these are all muscle mixes, music royalty free. So, um, one of the things about FitSwap that is unique is that you can, you can, you can kind of integrate the music. Um, when you become a FitSwap instructor, there is a library of music and I should have clarified exactly how that works, but there is a library of music from muscle mixes in FitSwap that you can get and use. So, so you can see down here, there's all kinds of things that are for sale to instructors. And so you're, you're selling your stuff and you're earning money. So these are pre-recorded videos. Um, let me see something with home room fit. It does look like these are live videos. And I wonder if you are a consumer, if they're also in there and recorded for later reference. But on FitSwap, these are recorded videos. So if you are really into pre-recording your content, you're going to want to go with a marketplace like FitSwap or you're going to want to do your own website. Okay, so the same with LubDub. LubDub, I've heard a lot about. I don't have any personal experience with this one. It's another marketplace. And you can see that it's... Um, at the top, it's really consumer focused. So they're getting people to come in. They're getting people to kind of buy um, these classes. It looks like they're giving a one off price. So, um, you know, another thing about joining a marketplace versus doing something kind of on your own is you're going to for the most part, lose that ability to try to create a stable income by doing subscriptions because you're going to get compensated for when people consume your content. So you won't have as much control over, um, you know, when people come and consume your content. Now, there are ways for you to still market your content, even if you are on a marketplace, you can still drive people to your content and, and market it. But, um, the method that I teach is a little different in that I teach you to take subscriptions and for you to, you know, build that real solid, strong relationship with individuals within your subscription base so that you can kind of stabilize your income. Okay. So that is love dub. So there are lots of marketplaces out there that are selling instructor content where you can either teach live or you can upload recorded content and then you can sell it and then they keep a percentage and you keep a percentage. So these are out there. There are a lot of other options. I'm sure that as um, you guys watch this video, I'm going to get a hundred comments back saying, Hey, what about, you know, this one and this one, and we can do this again in a few months and I can, I can show you more, but um, a marketplace. What I want you to remember about a marketplace is that it's one site that is uh, offering lots of different content from lots of different instructors to co consumers. So it's very consumer facing and um, you're going to be compensated based on how much your uh, classes get watched and used. And so that is a little bit different than if you were to go out and start to create a base of customers or potential customers who really want to hear from you. And um, when you are kind of going at it like that, where you're, where you're out there hustling for your customers, you know, maybe you've got a community either through Facebook or maybe through email, maybe through um, YouTube. You've got a community of people that subscribe to you that are very interested in what you have to say that want your content, then you are most likely going to want to build something that is individual to you. And I've seen so many different hacks and ways that people are doing that. So, um, 
So first we've covered marketplaces and now we're going to cover more individual type websites where um, it's really about the instructor. So these websites, of course, they're customer facing. Of course, you want your customers to look at this website, but the content of the website is you. It's not group fitness as a whole. All right. So some instructors are going in and using acuity scheduling to create a, um, a way to deliver the, to kind of post their workout schedule and then deliver that Zoom link and take payment. So Acuity Schedule would cover it like three of those elements that we talked about in terms of um, the essential elements to an online workout business. So it's going to get the payment processing. It's going to allow you to do the video delivery in combination with Zoom. You're going to put your Zoom link in there, but it at least gives you a way to take payment and then give the paid registrants access to your Zoom. And then it also is going to take care of the membership management because only people who have paid will get the link to your Zoom. So a lot of people have kind of hacked acuity scheduling and have used it in that way. So of course, when you go this route where you're building something that's individual to you and you're marketing it yourself to consumers, then you're going to keep more or all of the money. Um, with acuity scheduling, you're going to pay a specific price and then let me see something because I don't know the answer to this. Um, I'm looking to see if they keep a percentage of your payments. I don't see where they're saying anything about a percentage of their pay, of your payments. But if anybody has the answer to that, please feel free to pop it into the comments. Some membership management um methodologies will keep an extra percentage of your payment. So payment processors, of course, keep 3%. So PayPal is going to keep 3%. It's, it's actually 2.9% plus 30 cents for any transaction. So um, PayPal will keep that. Stripe will keep that. Square will keep that. That's just kind of across the board. Your payment processor is going to keep a percentage of the payment that comes in. And that is just the price of doing business online. It just is what it is. So then on top of that, some of the membership management softwares that we will talk about will also keep an extra percentage. Ha! So you got to watch and you got to really you got to really be careful and decide which tools you want to try out. Right. So there are some there are some um websites popping up that do a good job of kind of what I described in the beginning as spinning up a website for an individual instructor and then allowing them to um, get that content out and uh, and deliver the workout. So let's talk about Spivey. I don't know. Is it Spivey? Spivy? This is one that I just was brought today. So I, I put a few um, feelers out there asking, you know, what what's everybody using for their uh, online workouts? And this is one that I think was a solution built for studios and gyms that has been adapted so that instructors can use it. So um, I don't know too much about it. It looks at like it has been around a little while. So I think they have some unique solutions that um, that maybe some of the other companies don't have yet in terms of timing. I mean, I know they've got this little timer here. Um, they've got this leaderboard. So there are some cool things here. What I'm not seeing is anything about pricing, which is usually a sign that it's ex expensive or that they're going to try to give you individual pricing based on what they think you're going to do in terms of business. So 
can't say too much about this one until I know a little bit more, but I wanted to bring it up because I, I said that I would talk about the ones that people said they were using. So um, that's what I've been able to, to glean from this one so far is that it's kind of been around for a while and that they did an adaptation that would be specific to instructors. Okay, so let's talk about Moxie. A lot of you guys are using Moxie. So Moxie has some cool integrations. Um, I think one of the things that I'm noticing about Moxie, of course, you can go in there and you can put your schedule in. You've got your personal life studio. So it's got kind of the community element built in. If you see right here beside this guy, let me see if I can make that a little bigger. Oh, it won't let me. Um, I think I can do this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so if you see beside this little guy, this feed right here, this feed right here beside him, it is um, like a social feed. And then also um, it it's looking to me like with Moxie that they are, that there is a, oh, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> that there, the video is integrated into the software. So you don't have to, pull zoom in or try to pull, try to just be selling like the link to your zoom. It looks like it is integrated and it's got some music options. I don't know exactly what those are all about. If anybody watches this from Moxie, why don't you come on the show and tell us more about this? Cause it does look like the tools are maybe a little bit mature than some of the other uh, tools that we're seeing for individual instructors. Okay, so makes sense. And then here's the pricing. So 8% of the monthly income you earn on Moxie goes to Moxie. Now, bad doggy. Now here's the question. Plus standard credit card processing fees. So 11% 11, 11 off the top is gonna come. I'm really tempted to go shut that door so she doesn't bark anymore. Okay, 11% um, off the top of what you make is going to go to Moxie. That's not the worst. I know it sounds like a lot, but you know, you're either going to pay it to a platform or you're going to pay it in your time and your frustration and um, in monthly fees to uh, some tools that you're going to have to kind of pull together in order to create your website. Okay. So Ditto is another brand new one that I have met with. Um, is it Javon or Javon from Ditto? This, I, I like the company. I like what they are doing and I like that they are instructor focused. Um, and so you come in here and you kind of, again, can create a, 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 a portal that's just individual to you. And then you can get people there and sell them your workouts. And they are working with some cool uh, overlay features and different things. Payment, scheduling, reminder, business advisor. That looks interesting. Okay, so on Podio is another one, brand new. Everything you do here right now is free. I don't know what their pricing is gonna look like in the future. What I do like about on Podio is that you can come in and actually create your website really, really quickly, get scheduling and get going. It's, um, it's a really fast onboarding onboard process. I've actually sampled it and done it. And so, uh, and you don't have to get involved with anybody from the company in order to get your account created. You can do it all online. Now your website is gonna look just like this, but with your pictures. So the, the, the downside to that is that, you know, there's not a lot of customizing just yet. But that could be an upside too, because sometimes we get paralyzed in all of the options, right? Too many options. So that's on Podio. Um, I have a link for 
creating. Let me see something. No. So I'll, I'll get you guys the link to create your on Podio account if you're interested in giving that a try. Okay, and then this was another one that was brought to my attention today that um, looks a little bit more mature, but also more complicated. Um, oh, I wanted to say one thing about on Podio. So, um, and about all of these sites for individual instructors. You want to look for whether or not you can have monthly subscriptions versus whether people are just doing like a class pass type thing. And there, there, there are three kinds of ways that, that these websites would allow you to take payments. One would be a monthly subscription. That's the gold standard. For me, that's what I want you guys looking to have is, is a, uh, a monthly subscription. That's the only way that I really want you to be taking money because we are looking to create a business and a business needs stable income. It also um, ensures that your customer is not having to make the psychological buying process every single time they take a class with you. They know they're taking class with you. All they need to know is the schedule. That's how I want you doing business with your participants. But some of these do give you other options. And I know on Podio just implemented ClassPass, which is where um, they, they would buy like a card with you and they would have a certain number of classes to use within a certain amount of time. And then they you would use those classes and then you would sell them another ClassPass. So that is another way to go. And I could see that being really effective if you've got people who are taking classes from you and using other services. So they may want to be able to have 10 yoga classes with you, but really their primary workout is like a hit workout or something and you don't offer that. So they could do a class pass with you for those yoga classes, use those up and still be like subscribed to someone else. So that's when something like that is gonna come in really handy. Okay, so FitTune, I don't know too much about them, but I know they're out there. Now, the one other thing I wanted to talk about is the idea of building your website yourself using a DIY tool. So um, whether it's Squarespace, Wix, um, Weebly, Square Online now has a, a store. Um, what are the other big ones that you guys are using? So there are the DIY website tools and there, a lot of you guys have websites that you had from before COVID that were built in one of those. There is a way to take a software like MemberSpace, lay it on top of your existing website. And what it'll do is it'll make it so that some pages of that website are only accessible to members. So you can manage your membership through something like MemberSpace. There's another one called Punch Pass. Um, there's one for Weebly called Paid Members App that I'll teach next week. Um, and you lay it on top of your website and then you're able to manage access to certain pages so that only members can get to those pages. So then from there, you can embed your Zoom or your uh, you can put your past Facebook Lives in there. You can embed um, a private YouTube link in there. And then you've got a website that works as a member's space and as a marketing website. So the great thing about that option is that you've got this completely individual marketing website that you can use, you know, you can come in and really, um, you can really search engine optimize it properly. You've got more control over those types of things. And then you can really get out there and market in a way that makes sense to you and, and can bring in more people. So it's a great option to do your own website using a DIY website builder if you really want to be able to get out there and market, if you really want to be able to use search traffic to bring new members to you, if you really want to um, be able to market more than just classes. So, you know, Fit Pros Connect, we, um, I of course, 
have the boot camp. Um, I have the show. I have um, the free group where we all get together and talk about all kinds of things. And then I've got the virtual studio business accelerator. And I need a place where I can put all of those things. So I build my own website. I build it on Weebly. Of, of course I do because you know that's what I've been doing for 20 years. But I, I build it on Weebly. And, um, and then I have certain pages that are members only. So if you take, if you decide to do the workshop with me next week, this is too much hair. If you guys decide to do the workshop with me next week, um, what'll happen is that the whole workshop will happen on Facebook Live, but all those videos will go behind a member wall on the Fit Pros Connect page so that once that Facebook group goes away, all of those videos will still be accessible to you via a login on Fit Pros Connect. So that's how that'll work. And I will show you guys exactly how to do a website like that next week. So any questions before I move on? Because I want to tell you exactly about the website workshop next week and whether or not it would be a good fit for you. I'm going to stop sharing this screen and then I'm going to look over here at the Facebook feed and make sure that I'm not missing anything. Okay, so you guys look good. Helpful information, is this helpful? You guys, give me your likes and your hearts and your fires and pop some comments up here because first of all, it really helps me to understand whether or not I'm giving you the information that you need. It also helps Facebook to understand whether or not I'm doing a good job and then they will show this to more people if you think I'm doing a good job. So give me some hearts and fire and and uh, give me your likes, please, please, please. And I will wait for you while you do that. I will just sit here and play with my hair a little bit more. Um, all right. So we are going to move on. And I want to talk about the Done With You website building workshop. So that is going to start Friday. And we're going to do a half day workshop. Now, listen, what I'm going to go over with you in the Done With You website building workshop, first and foremost, is those essential elements to a website that have nothing to do with where you're building it. So here's what I see happen with DIY website builders. And I see it all the time, all the time. I bet everybody watching has done this. You go into one of those DIY website builders like Wix or Squarespace um, and you start to build a, a website, right? Because it's easy. It's a DIY website builder and you can just do it. And then you have no idea what to say on your about page. Um, you have no idea how to pick the pictures that go in there or what graphics you could use. You don't have any of the stuff prepared. Um, you don't know how to talk about your products. So if you've got, you know, a schedule of yoga classes and maybe a schedule of hit classes, do I put them together? Do I keep them apart? Do I, um, how do I talk about them in a way that helps people understand what they are? There just becomes all of these questions and no answers, right? So I want to do this workshop for you guys, this 10 days of working together so that I can answer those questions for you as they come up and you can end those 10 days with an actual website that you can be proud of. So that's what we're going to be doing. It's not necessarily about one specific technology. I'm not going to go in and say, hey, I'm going to teach you guys how to build a Weebly site and then we're going to go through it and I'm going to drone on and on about this is, you know, how you how you put in your members and this is how you take payment. I'm going to show you the technology, but we're going to work through those things that really keep people from from launching their site. Um, how do I take a picture that works well on the homepage? How do I get a logo if I want one? How do I figure out what colors to put where? How do I figure out, um, you know, how big the, the header font should be? All of, all of these things that just make people walk away and never launch their website, those are the things we're going to be going through. So on Friday, we'll get together. We will go through the essential elements. You're going to have homework over the weekend 
and you're going to be prepared to build this site. You may even get it completely built over the weekend. And that is great. So um, then we come back together Monday. We start talking about things like diff the different platforms. You know, maybe you built on you you were thinking you were going to build on a marketplace and now you're realizing you want to build on Weebly or Squarespace or you um, maybe you thought you were going to just do an on Podio site, but then you realized I can't get a blog if I do on Podio. So um, we're going to assess our needs and figure out where you're going to build and then you're going to get the technical instruction to help you build in that place. So we'll get back together. We will talk tech. We will talk. I will give you my script for the about page so you can get your about page written because ding, 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 you guys, this is really important. Grr, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I said ding, 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 and the phone rang. Okay. Did everybody, did I get everybody's attention? Um, when, when you have a website, your about page will be the second most visited page. So the first most visited page will be your home page, and the second most visited page will be your about page. So it's really, really important, and you want to get it done right. And a lot of people have no idea what to say, so they drone on and on, or they never write it at all. And it's really important because people want to know who they're doing business with. So I'm going to give you my about page script. Um, I'm going to give you the scripts for how to talk about your products and your different offers. Um, I'm going to train you on on-site and off-site search engine optimization. So what are the behind the scenes things that you need to do to your website to make sure that these search engines, Google can find your website and show it to the appropriate person? And then what are the things that um, that you do that have nothing to do with the website, like registration within Google Search Console, um, creation of a Google My Business page, all of those things that you need to do in order to make sure that you get indexed and that you get search traffic. Because that search traffic is the free customers that come because they searched something. You have no idea who they are but they searched something, you've got it to offer, they come to you, they buy from you. That's what search traffic is and it's free if you do it right. So we're gonna talk about on-site and off-site search engine optimization and then we're gonna talk about graphics and branding and I'm gonna give you the quick down and dirty way to get your logo done, get uh, your color scheme in place and create graphics. So that is what we will be doing in that 10 days together during the um, the website workshop. And that starts Friday. So the only other thing that you need to know about that is there's a 25% off coupon that's good today only. So at midnight tonight, that will go away. And that is early 25. So let me put in the comments here um, the link to the workshop. It's Fit Pros. I'll put my glasses on. It's fitprosconnect.com slash website dash workshop. And then the coupon for 25% off is early for early bird, right? That'll get you 25% off. It's not the cheapest workshop I've ever done, but it is well, well worth it because if you know in 10 days, you're going to end up with a website you can be proud of. Um, I think 279 is a super huge bargain. Now, if you're in the virtual studio business accelerator, you're not paying for this. You will be put in this group automatically and use it if you want and don't if you are feeling like it's overwhelming you because um Again, it's not the first thing that I want you to be working on. Okay, so we've got the coupon. We've got the link. Um, I'm just going to show you one other thing, and then we are going to get out of here for the day. So when you go to the website, here's the website for the workshop, and you go here, and you come down, and you're just going to click Add to Cart, and then go to Checkout. I'm going to show you where to put that coupon in. You're going to do the add to the coupon right there. 
All right, so that is how you do that. I need to put in early 25 and then it takes the price down. Yep. Okay, y'all, any questions? Any questions before we jump out of here? Throw them at me, I am here for you. Okay, y'all. Well, I will see you. I'll see you Friday at the workshop kickoff. And um, otherwise, I will see you back here next week. All right. I'll talk to you soon.